know what side they're fighting for. Someone's trying to kill us. We are trying to kill them. I thought I'd sit down for this one. I've been sick as a dog for the last, like, week and a half, so just please let it go. My voice is probably not the best right now. <laughs> Alex Garland has been a bit of an internet punching bag for a long time now. Well, actually, really not that long, ever since Men came out in 2022. He was a bit of a darling for a little bit after Annihilation and Ex Machina. People really were rubbed the wrong way from Men. And I get it, I understand. I, I wouldn't go as far as some of y'all do, but I really do love that movie, but it's still his worst movie. Don't get me wrong here. So it feels like I've been an Alex Garland defender ever since I've been born. Directors have stinkers, I get it. It happens. I don't think you throw away the entire dude's filmography after that, though. So personally, I was actually pretty excited for Civil War. Like, oh shoot, dude, A24 gave Alex Garland some money. Okay. I personally love writers turning to directing. Sometimes it could be a little bit of a double-edged sword. Me and my friends call it written by, directed by, produced by, and acted by syndrome. Charlie Kaufman's one of my favorite directors and writers, so some can do it like him. Some cannot. There is some extra value in having complete and utter control in filmmaking, especially if you know what you're doing. Regardless if you hate men, you have to respect the rest of Alex Garland's filmography. Anything he has touched has been pretty solid. I mean, ever since 2002 when he wrote 28 Days Later, a movie that actually has a lot of similarities with Civil War. A few travelers in a dystopian world, that's where the similarities end. One being in the UK and the other one being in the United States. Which brings me to some other issues that have been brought up by other people on the internet. Alex Garland was born in London. What does he know about America? Also, why is he featuring footage from Andy No? If you don't know who that is, it's just like a right-wing journalist. He's pretty crazy. Not the good type of crazy. And the biggest question raised by people online. Citizens of America. People of the Florida Alliance. You gotta move! and the Western forces of Texas and California. How is Texas and California in an alliance? You stupid Brit, how could they ever be together? Civil War is A24's biggest swing. They have not given out a budget like this, ever. They just haven't. And to give it to Alex Garland, I mean, like, props to them, dude. This movie is not gonna make that money. I'm recording this on the Thursday night. I have no idea what the box office is gonna be, but it's not gonna be over 50 mil. I don't know if they greenlit this before or after men, but I'm okay with it. It's about four journalists taking a trip to DC to interview the president, a fascist president played by Nick Offerman. If you want to watch Civil War for productive discourse about America's division increasingly growing to a point of civil war, you're not going to get it here. Sure, that's what this movie's about. There's no profound subtext in this movie. You're not going to learn anything. I probably would have preferred if he attempted some nuanced political takes. So if this movie isn't going to give us something profound on American politics, why is it in America? Why does it mention Antifa? The entire movie plays it so safe, but there is another side of this coin. If you want to watch Civil War for great performances, a great audiovisual experience, it's a pretty solid option. And yeah, you know what? There are some profound images in this movie. There are. I didn't really realize that this movie was like an audiovisual movie. Then I saw it was being released on IMAX, and I was like, this doesn't really seem like an IMAX movie. Pretty quickly from the jump, the use of sound, soundtrack and score are all used pretty well. It's all at the forefront of this dystopian flick. Something that I really loved in this movie was during all the warfare scenes, you'll have these abrupt cuts where it's just like somebody taking a picture and it'll make like that shutter sound. Right when it shutters too, all the sound cuts off. The soundtrack works about 60% of the time. I like the choice of using like late 90s, early 2000s, like alt grunge music. Like, you know, all the instrumentals. I think it works pretty well for like a dystopian war flick. Something that I didn't think worked for me at least, was the De La Soul needle drop. There's a scene where this militia like sieges a house and then just out of nowhere, you know, it's super tense. And it's just like, here's a De La Soul song. And just the vibes pick up, like what? It was built up to be this like really intense scene. I guess it's trying to show that just this one guy, this one of these journalists actually enjoyed this. He's like, ooh, adrenaline, ooh, this is so crazy, right? I, I don't get what it's adding to the movie. <laughs> Jesse Plemons has a really small role as this huge villain. He's just an evil dude. You know, Todd from Breaking Bad vibes. He plays a nationalist that just kills a lot of people. This gets to the most annoying critique that I have about this movie. I hate making this critique. This is what built YouTube film culture for like the last 15 years. I don't want to be a part of this type. This is not the best way to critique movies. The plot hole people, the people that are like, I would have done something else if I was in that situation, people. Just overall nitpicking. I usually just like going with the vibes of the film. 
dumb. I don't really care about nitpicking. Oh my god, there are some terrible decisions by characters in this movie. There are some baffling script moments, which is really weird to see from Alex Garland. And quite frankly, there's a lot of bad execution behind the camera for conveying certain scenes. I'm gonna get into some spoilers here. I don't really think you can spoil this movie that much. You know the gist of the movie when you watch the trailer. People are gonna die. So they pick up like this American Chinese friend, right? They link up, they just like find each other while driving. They get abducted by Jesse Plemons character. You know, the nationalist. He's made it very clear that, you know, he's murdered a lot of people and that he's a nationalist. He kind of interrogates everybody and, you know, he's just like, where are y'all from? And you, all you have to say is like, a state in America. And he's like, yeah. This Chinese guy is like struggling to get words out. And he eventually just says he's from Hong Kong. You didn't read the room. You didn't think it would be advantageous to lie. So you're from like Jersey or something, dude. Anywhere. You think he's going to let you live after you say Hong Kong? Like, do you want to live? Do you want to live? Also in this scene, they are saved by the Mentat from Dune. I love this dude so much, by the way. You know, he drives like this escape car. And as they're escaping, they're being shot at. These people are directly behind the car. I hate nitpicking. I really do. But these guys are shooting directly behind the car. This guy's driving. There are people in the back seat. So the car is getting shot at. It is later revealed that this, this dude has been shot somehow. How did you get shot? How are you as the driver of the car the one that got shot. You have a bunch of cushioning behind you and you have a person behind you. How did that person not get nicked or anything? I hate mentioning this stuff, I really do. But there are so many of these scenes where I'm just like, why is the execution so bad? Here's the last scene I'll talk about that absolutely pissed me off. So you know, they're in the White House and they've finally marched all the way to the president. There's a lot of gunfights. Right when this gunfight ends, you know, momentarily, Kaylee Spaney's character just like, wants to take a picture directly in the middle of the hallway. First of all, you could just wait for all this to be done. You're very close to the conclusion of all of this, I promise. So she just goes and takes a picture. And obviously, you know, somebody's going to be there waiting with a gun. <laughs> Kirsten Dunst like comes in and like dives to like push her to the floor, but doesn't like go to the ground with her, just pushes her and takes her place so then she gets shot. And the thing that's really annoying about all of this is earlier in the movie, they were trying to foreshadow how somebody might take a picture of a fellow journalist dying and would you take that picture? Right when that was said, I was like, it's definitely gonna happen at the end. It just is. So obviously when she's standing in the middle of the hallway after shoving her friend to the ground, she slowly gets shot and pictures are being taken and Alex Garland's like, whoa. Also, she was wearing Kevlar. Look, multiple people in the audience laughed at this. I'm not the only one nitpicking this. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like I enjoyed this film, but I obviously did. I'm still a huge Alex Garland defender. I think what he did visually really worked for me. The sound was fantastic in this movie. I wouldn't mind a nomination for it. I like how it demonstrates opportunist and nationalism. I'm not saying it's showing it in a profound way or anything, but it's an okay representation of probably what would happen. I like how senseless violence is depicted in this movie. This movie is worth seeing alone for the action sequences, but if you're looking for a movie that offers any solid advice on division and politics, Politics, you're not gonna get it. That's just not what this movie is. Alex Garland may think that at times, but it's just not what this is. I'd still take this movie over Men. I'd probably give this around like a 7 out of 10 or something. If I rewatched Men, I maybe like it more. Who knows? The only thing I know is you should probably go watch my David Cronenberg video. I'll put it up here somewhere. I swear it's like a really well-crafted video. It took me like two months. Everybody watched my Yorgos Lanthimos one. Nobody wants to watch my David Cronenberg one. Come on, get it together, people. I'll see y'all later.